Streets reporter of the new world though, the Bishop Grady Let y'all know what the fuck going on for this Black Files News report Appreciate y'all tuning in Check out blackfoxnews.com Slash shop Actually get yourself some paraphernalia Supporting the channel uh, Support us as we continue to support y'all Giving y'all the real Keep y'all in tune with what's going on in the world around you. Um, also, if you or a loved one need mathematics tutoring, I know that school is about, actually about to start for a lot of people, uh, kids and adults as well. Check out thegraduationparty.org to get yourself some high quality, very affordable, and highly accessible uh, on the spot mathematics tutoring help. Um, and there's free tutorials on there as well. Now, moving on to the news. There is a lot going on in. Uh, we'll call it West Africa Northern, Central, and West Africa Right now, a lot of activity um, Especially around the country N uh, Niger, because on July 26th, they actually There was a Military section in the Country that actually took over the country Basically told the Democratically Elected president of Niger uh, Mohamed Bazoum You know, this is somebody who actually had a great relationship with, you know, the Western powers, with France and with the United States or whatever. Basically told him, you're not the leader anymore, you know what I mean? I'm in command now, you know, and got him up out of there. And recently, according to the Associated Press, have actually threatened to kill him if there's any military intervention from outside nations or any attempts to try to restore Bazoom back into power. So... The taking over of this country or the military coup that just went, uh, went down is not unprecedented because if you look at the stats, you know, it's, military coups have been happening um, pretty consistently since about 2008. And out, of, and, the, and, and out of all of the coups, you actually have 11 uh, being led by military leaders who were trained by the United States. Through the United States military uh, in their presence out there in Niger, which like kind of sits in like you know the the top middle of the of the head of Africa, you know what I'm saying, or the head portion, or whatever. It's like that smack in the middle of that of that hammer, and with them being placed there, uh, the United States actually has um, not only 11, 1,100 troops over there, estimated to be about, but they also have one of their biggest um, drone bases. In the world uh, And you know They try to say that It's not an official U.S. base But The United States Has been out there You know Since Obama had You know what I mean Got AFRICOM out there Set up and popping And you know They've been building Essentially military bases But not calling them Military bases You know what I'm saying Trying to fuck with the people You know Using fucked up verbiage Trying to disguise what, what, what all that colonialism That's going on You know what I'm saying These are facts You know that, like You know what I mean You can look these things up and it might be using different words, but it's basically just saying what the fuck I'm saying. Um, now, in in doing these, um, in the in the United States having its uh, military, one of its uh, drone bases out there, uh, that is Air Base Two Zero One. You know what I mean? I gotta shout that out because uh, every code from my home city, you know, Jersey City, we up. You know what I mean? That's Two Zero One. But so it stood out to me in that regard. But this is where the U.S. actually sends all the unmanned drones. And, you know, now you can see how they get inactive over there still in, like, the Middle East and in Africa and all of that. So, um, but through them having this base, apparently they've been, tra the United States has been training military leaders. Now, have they been training these leaders specifically so that they can go into these other countries like Mali or like Burkina Faso, which in uh, recent, uh, in the past, in recent times have also undergone their own military coups. And are now being run by the military juntas or the military uh, organizations that actually took over those countries. Um, you know, the leaders of these coups also haven't been trained by the United States uh, since the U.S. has been out there with uh, Air Base 201. Now, so this is these are things to keep in mind. Like, is it funny business going on? Essentially, you have um, the United States seeing this and really trying not to call it a coup because if they acknowledge that it's a coup they have to therefore like withdraw their aid from from them and you know the u.s got business out there 1100 troops you know a few bases you know what i mean a lot of uh you know a lot of um stuff going on with 
the drones that they have and you got to understand Niger is actually a, the top ex, one of the top exporters of uranium with and uranium is basically you know it's one of the elements on the periodic table um, definitely is you know it's one that's important because it's basically used as fuel for nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons and you know it's just it's it's a, it's a nuclear world that we live in so you know something like that is valuable and they uh, are one of the top exporters to France of this rare element yet how is the exploitation there's where's the exploitation that happening because Niger is still one of the poorest countries arguably the poorest country in the world you know what I'm saying as far as GDP and all of that so you got to keep these things in mind like that, that exploitation has to be happening and it's pretty obvious well it seems like the United States doesn't want to let go complete control of what they what they have going on maybe they even have a vested interest in these new leaders taking over but oddly enough a lot of the people that are in these areas are in support of the new junta and in support of the stances of the leaders of Mali and Burkina Faso and uh, in Guinea uh, who have public, publicly come come out and say said in any military intervention in the taking over of this of this country is tantamount to a declaration of war you basically say you want war if you if you are one of these western countries or any country that is outside of west africa or even in west africa and you're trying to interfere in niger and remove the new um military leadership from position so that they can restore muhammad bazoum the former democratically elected uh, president into power then you're basically declaring war against them you motherfucker let's get it on it's up till it's stuck you know what I mean like so that's that's the that's that's their stance and a lot of people are in support of this because this is this battle is being made to look like it's a battle against uh colonialism you know what I mean anti-imperialist um you know what I mean um promotion of of more like unity and 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 you know self preservation among african nations and just the african people in general this is how it's being kicked even though these people have been trained by africa i mean trained by the united states now is it un, is it completely out of uh, out of the uh realm of possibility that these people could just be properly trained and now that they have the skill to you know throw, have military overthrows and you know what I'm saying really go to war against on a national level that maybe they just decided to take that skill back to their homelands and you know what I mean start revolts to get western civilization up out of Africa in the midst of like a decade plus of, of the building of and strengthening of countries like of uh, forces like AFRICOM or even ECOWAS ECOWAS being the economic cooperation of uh, West African states, you know, so pretty much all of these countries are a part of um, a economic collective, ECOWAS, which has also come out and threatened the uh, threatened to put their own forces into Niger to restore the leadership of Mohamed Bazoum, the former democratically elected president, and to move out the new leadership. Uh, which is run by the uh, military leader um, Abdur Abdurrahman Chiani. Uh, now, um, this is this is leadership that uh, Ecowas is saying that they're going to, you know, that they want, they they even recently just had a summit about it. You know, mind you, this coup took place on the 26th. Just a few days ago, they started an emergency summit to actually decide how are they going to deal with. Um, you know, with this situation in Niger. Now, keep in mind, Niger is a member country of ECOWAS. So is Mali. So is uh, Guinea. So is um, Burkina Faso. And you know, pretty much, if you could look at the map of Africa, you also you pretty much got the countries that are on the inside of like Mauritania and uh, Libya. You know, it, it's not including Algeria. You know, the membership of ECOWAS is not including um, Cameroon. Um, it um it is um not including um 
it is including Nigeria though. It is include. It's not including Chad. So that kind of like paints a picture of like what the border is for Ikowa. And then it's pretty much like the rest, you know, of the West African nations. Um, so these nations are, are are meeting, but you have these prominent um, nations that are st- stepping out and they are saying that they don't want to see any military intervention in this thing. Let Niger, Niger handle this their handle their own situation and um but obviously everybody's not with that they feel like it's a danger they don't know who these people are these were they, they apparently there's just as many people it's seeming like that are voting for the former democratically elected president to be in power still so um what ECOWAS has done at, has they've like actually tried to instill sanctions um against Niger, you know, to basically cut off power going towards these military leaders. So you have, um, you, you know, the sanctions really, they initially started with France and Germany uh, withhold, withholding, you know, military aid and all of that. European Union. Then uh, the United States, again, not wanting to declare it a coup. So that, and, you know, still initially supplying um, with funds to Niger, they actually stopped and halted a 100 million dollar transfer to uh the uh niger as a a form of sanction um neighboring country nigeria which is the largest country and the most powerful country in ecowas they actually stopped their uh you know as part of their sanctions you know they started some like blackouts that were happening in niger you know as part of the sanctions so you know their punishment for like Basically, you need to restore power. But Nigeria has is not necessarily picking a side as much as they're saying that they are wedded to uh, Niger actually reaching a, 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 a state of, like, um, political and economic stability in, in democracy. So that's where they stand. But who knows what, what what's going on? It's, um, if, if you're not related to the situation, if you just interested in war strategy and policies is a very interesting situation to observe um it looks like united Sta- the united states which isn't and this isn't um you know out of the realm of of character for the united states but it looks like the u.s might be playing both sides of the war you know what i'm saying here you are supporting um this democratic in, um government of niger for you know years and giving them a lot of uh, money and aid and support and then putting your troops over there and, you know, having Air Base 201, which is a $110 million Air Base, by the way. It's said to actually take 20 to $30 million for upkeep on a yearly basis. The U.S. very much has invested into Niger's, into their presence in Niger and therefore, like, Niger's military and infrastructure. Um, but... They're also training soldiers and people that end up taking over some of these West African nations. So it's like, is the U.S. playing both sides of the war or not? What's going on? Or, is, I mean, is or is this a genuine uh, call for um, the restoration of power to uh, the people of Niger without the influence of Western military? And civilization, and Western civilization, you know, it's um other interesting things that are going on with the case. Might have uh, really covered it all, but it's a lot of uh, instability. It's, we're unsure if there's going to be military intervention. ECOWAS has been there in this summit that they recently came to call together. They have decided to have a standby force as they you know continue trying to come to a resolve but it's seeming pretty tense over there and it's looking like it's going to be a bloody outcome um you have the um you have uh a lot of the embassies and you know u.s um people from the u.s and european union whatever a lot of they're telling their officials to get up out of there you know what i'm saying so pretty much the united states got all their officials out there they they're not removing their 1100 troops United, United States is not removing their 1,000 plus troop presence out there, and you know they still got that Air, air Base 201. However, um, you also had the Secretary of State Victoria Nuland, who actually uh, went out there. 
she actually met with the coup leaders in Niger and you know basically told them to stand down you know they rejected that shit fuck out of here bitch like we running this shit like and this is how it's gonna be you know so that was their essentially their uh proposed their uh, alleged back and forth however this um they what was interesting is that she was not allowed to meet with Muhammad Bazoum so you know oddly enough though more so is the US playing both sides the United States is said to have actually met with the, uh, the the leaders of the coup, you know, and apparently five. It, it actually comes out from a report by the Intercept that five of these coup uh, of these leaders within the coup have actually been trained by U.S. military, you know, and that makes a, a lev- you know U.S. trained mili- uh, people. You, uh, people trained by the military, by the U.S. military, having led 11 coups throughout West Africa since 2008, and that's that's the facts on that. But the, it's it's a real sticky situation as is looking like, and it seems people are are in fear of there being violence. And we know what's gonna happen next. Stay tuned, Green War and graduation. For where wigs get pushed back like Brexit deadlines, your homies get locked down like India did part of cash, man. Beef like doggone Fulani tribe did this past year. Line of